Welcome one and all to episode 29 of Pocket Edition. Today we are covering Sony's press conference and giving you our thoughts, opinions and reaction to the overall conference and basically cherry picking what we liked about the conference and do we think they overall brought the goods this year. But first, I'd like to introduce my guest being Count Fracula, who has just finished covering the entirety of E3 live, might I add. So he's probably exhausted, so be friendly. But how are you, Count? I'm good. You put me off by not doing the clap sync. <laughs> and our second guest, all the way from Joe Chipland, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you doing? Joe Chipland. Is that nicer than England at the moment? Can I uh, go yeah. there instead? Everywhere's nicer than England at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys what did you think about sony let's get straight into it did they bring the goods uh, <laughs> look it could have been better oh can i just point out something very odd just to kind of kick things off what was with the tent they were in at the start yeah does anybody know what that, that was? was real dumb that really annoyed me. why did they change because reasons special reasons oh. that they can't tell us they... i i've got a I, well i've got more than a theory I, I i i'm pretty certain that the reason they did that was if you look at the tent at the beginning it and the banjo music that they were playing the banjo music was the music from the last of us and the setting it was yeah and the tent was the same as the bit of the trail but exactly still. so they were setting the scene basically did it need to happen though I don't think it did, because then we had five minutes of some fuckwits talking while... Game spot. <laughs> five minutes of fuckwits talking while they moved everyone else over <laughs> to the actual place where they were holding the play- the thing. Well, it was a trade-off, wasn't it? They wanted to be classy and they wanted to set the scene. And I actually Just thought that, that opening in there. wasn't bad. I, yeah, I, I, I thought that was okay. But then the problem is then they cut away to those talking heads and it was like, well... I wanted to fall asleep when they were talking, to be honest. It's like, I don't care. I want to see what games you've got to offer, not what these stupid assholes are talking about. And they're not going to show any games while they're, while they're talking. <laughs> I actually kept falling asleep and then waking up when they were showing the games because I was watching it, you know, <laughs> sort of, I don't know when Damn, I was watching it, Joe. some ridiculous time in the morning. <laughs> Joe's getting old. <laughs> getting old. <laughs> um, getting older. Yeah, I've aged about 20 years in the last five. Oh, damn. After watching Nintendo. Oops, that's the, we're on the wrong episode for that. We'll <laughs> yeah. that Get to time. that later. Um, can I just point out something else that I found amusing as well? Is last year they had that freaking live orchestra or band that would uh, create the music from scratch for the games. That was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, I believe for so. For Sony? Yeah. And then this year they just went cut to like a single banjo and then had one dude playing a flute later on. They just cut like all the orchestra down. Maybe Sony are having financial problems again. <laughs> I, I doubt they're having financial problems to that extent. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, all right. So anyway, guys, Count, do you want to go first? What were the highlights of the conference for you? They showed off a bit of Spider-Man gameplay after the actual press conference had finished, which was quite nice. I mean, that that's all they had that I am personally excited for this year. So you're not getting around Last of Us? I mean, the first one wasn't really for me. The uh, the thing that, mm-hmm. that like the combat looks like nice and visceral and interesting in the second one, but you know, what it doesn't really hold much interest to me at all. Wow! So it sounds like the conference fell pretty flat. Uh, oh wait, the, I've forgotten about Ghost of Tsushima, that game, yes. the, the samurai, not well, the Japanese theme game. That is, that's that's a strong showing. That look gorgeous yeah and apparently that little snippet of gameplay and story they showed is just a side quest oh shit Bloody nice hell. <laughs> yeah so holy crap can't wait to see the actual main game um but in terms of like things being visceral holy shit that game what is that running on like oh my god that game looks amazing yeah it really does did you i'm, I'm watching it again just because but did you see in the in the gameplay bit they were doing when they had the main character and the and the lady folk with the bow uh, fighting, the leaves yep. beneath them were deforming realistically as they moved no. through. No, they were holy shit! It looks so fucking good. Wow, I know that game's amazing. come right up on my radar. It was passing me by, and then I saw yeah, a couple same. of clips, and then I saw this the uh, the other day, whenever it was they had their conference. And uh, it's right on my radar now. It's a, it's you know, one that I definitely want to go out and buy, assuming that you know it comes out and it's as good as it looks like it's gonna be. 
Exactly, yeah. I feel like one thing that's going to bother me with that game is I feel like I can never quite see the distance clearly, like the draw distance were really pulled in. And I'm guessing it's because they put so much detail and emphasis into what's immediately in front of you. I feel like that's going to bother me. Like there was always a bit of haze or there was always a bit of glare off the sun where you just couldn't make out the uh, distance. Maybe that won't be the case if you're playing on a high-end system. Um, is it coming to PC? Was it exclusive to PS4? I believe it's coming to PC. I might be wrong. Okay. Fun fact as well, I was watching it with um, Kelsey yesterday, our silent guest. <laughs> <laughs> Currently no confirmed PC release. Oh, okay, that's a shame. I was watching it and I pointed out like, you know, this game looks amazing, but it, it can't be as, the gameplay can't be as good as it looks. Like surely they're not pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Like surely they just haven't nailed this. And then right as I said that, you know, he did this weird stance of samurai and he just like sliced the dude's freaking head off. It was like, like a lightning strike with the samurai sword. I was like, and my jaw just dropped. I was like, oh my God, it is as good as what it couldn't be in my head. Um, but yeah, that's a highlight. I think that was one of my highlights for the show other than The Last of Us. Um, Spider-Man didn't really do much for me, um, unfortunately. And I was actually really hyped after seeing it last year, but it just, I don't know, just fell flat for me this year. Oh, I actually like the Spider-Man stuff, to be honest. But Yeah, I can say, it looked Spider-Man. like the web swinging in particular, because it was actually attaching to things. Mm. You know, how, how it's supposed to do in real life, <laughs> yeah, as not opposed like to in the last few Spider-Man games like, where yeah. you're just some <laughs> random point sky. in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the fog, the draws just yeah. distance fog. I mean, the one thing about uh, Spider-Man web swing, they had prompts to web swing to certain places when they were doing the gameplay, and I was like, okay, what I would yeah. prefer is that you can turn that option off and freehand it and fuck it up. That's what I want. I want to be able to fuck up a Spider-Man quite frequently, and I'm sure I will <laughs> if you can do that. How cool or nauseating would Spider-Man be in VR? Oh my god, no. <laughs> that would be just Spider-Man awful. VR with free Terrifying. bucket. Yeah. <laughs> free bucket. Collector's bucket. Oh that god. would be dreadful. I'd like yeah. to experience it once. Um, but moving on, other than Spider-Man, Joe, what, what were your highlights? Um, I actually, I would say that the, the generally the big games that they showed, plus one other... Um, were highlights for me. Last of Us 2, you know my view on the original Last of Us. I yes. love that game. And I, I, I loved every minute of what they showed of that. I even, I have to say, I even liked the whole setting and the banjo music. I thought that was well done. The problem there is it was a trade-off with all that bloody, you know, having to move and having the head talking heads. So that was boring. But I liked what they did up to that point. So I wasn't I wasn't the same with Camp on that one. I, I, I quite liked that up to that point. Um... Then they did all that and it was, you know, lost it for a bit. But then they, they brought it back with Ghost of Tsushima. I, 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 that looked just amazing, as you've already said. And then yeah. um, I think almost you can split the conference and the games, you know. I think the conference was okay, but the games they showed were amazing. And and Ghost of Tsushima, as I said, and then they went to... They had a weird banana dream thing that they kept doing. But, but they did a oh, short, very short clip. Yeah. Let me smash new what that was and I keep forgetting. It's called Dream, I think. No idea. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and 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 after they had that little inter- in, in the interval thing, whatever they do with that, with Dream, they showed us a very brief clip of Remedy's new game, Control. Yes. What oh, is I'd that? What is the other that. game? What is their first game that was the Xbox exclusive? I could oh, not remember. Um, you're Quantum, talking Quantum Dr- Break. Quantum Break. Yeah. Oh, see, it, I was like looking. I'm like, this feels like a follow up or a sequel to that. Is it? No, no it's not. It's a se- it's a separate IP. The actor who or the actress, however you want to put it, who plays the main character was in Quantum Break, so that's what put off a okay. lot of people. But yeah, no, that is right. it's not connected, but it looks pretty it cool because telekinesis connected. and yeah. shit. Absolutely, oh, I, I, I saw that. Really my, cool. my my first thing was this is remedy. My second thing was yes. I want this fucking game. Yeah. I was like, I want this fucking game. This looks really interesting and cool. But I was also extremely confused knowing that it looks like a Remedy game and it looked like uh, Quantum Break as well. Yeah. And then the, the title popped up and I was like, well, now I'm really confused. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that was really good as well. Um, but yeah, I, th- I mean, to move on to like kind of my overall thoughts of the conference, I'm kind of in alignment with Joe. It didn't feel very conferencey. It just felt like a showcase of a couple of big games. Quite a lot of them felt like that this year, though, to be fair. 
Yeah, except Microsoft, which they kind of do a lot of sizzle reels and they don't yeah. have a lot of chunky gameplay. And they do put a lot of informational stuff in there about, you know, what's coming with their services, um, Windows 10, um, Game Pass, and all that kind of shit. I enjoyed mm. Microsoft's overall, though. I thought that was good, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not complaining about either or, but it would have been nice to maybe hear a bit more about the platform, what they're doing with it, just a little bit. Like, it, it was very, just nothing. It's just like, thanks for supporting us. Here's the games. And I understand that people love that because, you know, we buy these systems for the games. But it would be nice to just get a little bit more detail about, you know, what's happening with PSVR, um, you nothing. know, in general with the platform, it's what's treacherous. happening with PS Now. Um, yeah, exactly. Just something. Did you see Digital Foundry talking about that? They did a some uh, a video talking about this, um, what what Sony were going to be offering and, and what they why they thought that Sony were going with these sort of four main games and why it was a different format this year. And one of their theories is because they're kind of winding down. TGS. For PlayStation Ooh, 5. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, nah, I don't know if I buy into that. I, d I, don't, I, I don't either, but it was an interesting take on it. Um, Hmm. I, I I just I I think like how do you wind down these days? How do you wind down a console? Because I'm a believer of you don't wind the consoles down anymore. They're just gonna slowly ride off into the sunset. And by that I mean everything's gonna be forwards and backward compatible. Because I think Microsoft's going to basically forcefully enforce They'll a force trend the where Sony's going to have to adopt that. Otherwise, yeah. it's going to be viewed very negatively. Yeah. If, if PS5 isn't backwards, isn't backwards compatible. compatible with PS4, I will be very very surprised. Yeah. So as it, it's on PC architecture. There's no reason why it shouldn't be unless they're getting greedy or they can't be fucked and they're lazy. Um, or they I mean, want to push PS right. now. Console manufacturers, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, yeah, no shit. But they just can't get away with it, right? So in terms of winding down the PlayStation 4, I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're going to see the developers go full bore and when we get that crossover period to the PS5, you're just going to see two versions. I mean, fuck, we saw it with the 360 and the Xbox One. There's no reason why it's not going to happen with the, you know, the PS4 and the PS5 and the Xbox One X and the next Xbox. It's already happening now with the Xbox One and the Xbox One X. There's a drastic power difference between those two systems, like astronomical, and there's no issues there. It's funny, actually, because I said this exact thing about The Last of Us 2 the other day. I was saying that I thought that, you know, some people were saying maybe The Last of Us 2 might not appear on the PS4. And, and my response to that is I think The Last of Us 2 will do exactly like The Last of Us did. Last of Us was a PS3 game, See and then it, got, you know, then it got ported across to the PS4. I think this will happen here. We'll get The Last of Us 2 on the PS4, and then when the PS5 comes out, somewhere along the line, we'll see The Last of Us 2 remaster. Yeah. I think we might see a remaster, but maybe it won't be immediately, right? It won't be at the oh, system Oh, it won't be straight away. It'll be like, it'll take two it'll be like three a couple years of years down the road. Yeah. Exactly. I, don't, I just don't think we're going to see uh, that kind of emphasis put on remastering games to the same level anymore. I think it's just going to be a natural progression where these games are scalable enough between systems that all right, well, you bought that copy, it now works on your next one. Or that's you a buy good, yeah, that's it. a good it's point. It's going to be actually. very little faffing around. I feel like it's going to be a much smoother transition. Um, so in terms of, you know, them being quiet at E3 and then maybe winding it down, I think it's, one, I think the PS4, PS5 is too far away for that. Um, I think we've still got at least one to two solid years in that system before 2020. we... Yeah, 2020 say, at the earliest we get PS5. I'm going to say they'll reveal... Like the concept yes. for the PS5 next E3. That's what I think. Yeah, I do. agree. And yeah, the Xbox. I can could, I could see that. Back to Sony. Uh, <laughs> oh, there was a new. Uh, there's a new uh, Squanch games. You know, uh, Rick and Morty. One of the Rick and Morty guys has a game company. Yeah, that was weird. Wasn't I mean, that? it looks like a game that he would make. So I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's also yeah. one of the first ones of their games that's not entirely VR. Like, it can be played on VR, but it can also be played on PS4. Mm. Also, it says debuting exclusively on PS4, so it might be coming to PC later yeah, on. But still, I'm probably going to get that, because, you know, I've enjoyed their other two games. It looked yeah. funny. Yeah, absolutely. And what little we awesome saw, it was just a, you know, <laughs> it did look funny. Yeah, just a stupid yeah. thing that they would make. Um... So the other game we haven't really touched on, I mean, I know we haven't really dabbled much in The Last of Us 2, but we don't really need to. It looks fucking amazing. Um, <laughs> Death is Stranding. Death Stranding. Yeah. My lord. What the <laughs> that fuck is that game? fucking mental. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, very confusing. We've got yeah. gameplay and whatever, and we still don't know what it is. Why is there a baby in a fucking chest-mounted thing? And why is it... Why does it help detect weird black things on tendrils? I don't understand what's happening. I just wondered what Kojima's been smoking, to be honest. I just... <laughs> yeah, can I have some? Because it seems really <laughs> great. 
<laughs> it's the only way to understand the game. If you want to jump into um, like straight up theory territory, we can. Um, the game looks interesting. It looks nice. Um, it's got some big names attached to it. Yeah. But yeah, it would have been nice to... I, I mean, I understand they're not going to give anything away story-wise. I want this to be a complete surprise. And they're probably getting off on the fact that they're confusing us because it's probably going to make us buy it because we want to know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it looks interesting, though. I mean, my theory is there's some kind of weird overlapping dimensions and I've got a feeling what he's carrying around on his chest is probably him somehow as a child. I don't know. Something weird <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> you know what? Just, I was I just about to say put, that I makes wouldn't... sense. <laughs> It so doesn't, doesn't make sense, but I wouldn't it put it past Hideo Kojima <laughs> to do something like that. If we're bookmarking this, if I'm right, yeah, I get just max props. Max so I'm going to say, this is going to be, <laughs> this game is going to either flop hard and just be nothing like what we expected and not good, or it's going to be the best game ever and everyone's going to love it. One of those two yeah. extremes, there is no in-between with this at this point. I think that's <laughs> probably that's a good call, yeah, yeah. Or, or it'll be Marmite. People will love it and hate it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good point. All right, <laughs> yeah, let's move on. I don't know. I just want to know what's going on and when it's coming out. <laughs> I was going to say that brings me to the point of what is actually coming out this year for Sony in terms of ah, that was what, exactly what I was going to say as well. Yeah. Oh, well, Spider Man that's coming out late this yeah, year. Yeah, Spider Man. Other than that, nothing. Just back to Joe's original point of you know. Uh, Digital Foundry like, is the PS4 winding down. I still don't agree with that. I think last year at E3, they had kind of a similar showing. Um, it was kind of just a, a couple of big games that were on the horizon. I think TGS was actually where they blew their big reveal load and dates and what was coming up, um, you know, in the immediate future, just because yeah. uh, they can grab a lot more spotlight at that show. So I don't know. It's interesting. But yeah, not a whole lot was coming out this year, I believe, in terms of, you know, big releases for the, the system. So, yeah. It was interesting to know uh, in my comments uh, uh, about Microsoft that people were knocking Microsoft for only having like one exclusive come in between now and the end of the year. You know, being uh, 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 I can't even remember the name, the driving game, Forza Horizon, Forza Horizon 4. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know that looks awesome. Uh, you know, wh- whether you, you're big into driving games or not, you know it is a big game for them, and it's it's come in this year. Um, but, you know, okay, I know you've got to take into account other stuff that's come earlier in the year as well, and Sony have done better there than Microsoft. But if you look towards the end of the year, the the, the lineup for Sony and, and Microsoft isn't that different. It's basically no, multi-plats and one exclusive. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But, yeah, for, for Sony, there's not a lot coming this year. But, you know, they had a lot last year. That's the thing. It's the same with Nintendo. That's the thing, they don't yeah. have a lot coming this year because they had so much last year. What's interesting, though, is we didn't get to see any more of Days Gone. I thought we'd certainly see it. It was a little bit. Was there? Yeah. A very brief amount, wasn't it? Like yeah, a sizzle reel amount. amount. Oh, like, we got yeah, a, it wasn't we got a, a lot demo of it, but I know year. that it was there, yeah. And we got a bit of yeah, Neo I, I, 2, though. That, that, that was good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, oh I, I forgot we'll about that, just, yeah. I'm sure we're missing something. I'm sure we're going to get slammed by the one person who listens to this I'm literally the just time. scrolling through Double the timeline of, of, <laughs> of my recording of it just to see if there's anything that I missed. Just to make sure. All right, uh, but you know, overall, how do we feel about it? Uh, did it deliver what you kind of expected this year? Overall, in terms of, we knew they were only bringing a few games, but did it get you hyped, excited? I know I said uh, at the start, but actually, having talked about it, it did do okay. Yeah, it was I was fine. really it's hyped better. about the games. I wasn't so hyped about the conference, apart from like I say, I like the beginning, I like the opening, I like the banjo. I, you know, I know you guys didn't, but I did. I enjoyed it. Uh, oh, it's okay, a banjo. Cool. It, it existed. <laughs> yeah, I was just pointing it out. I just didn't enjoy the acoustics in the tent. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know what it is with Sony, but their acoustics have, have, have been a bit janky, you know, on several occasions. Because yeah. I remember um, well, I mean, they're in Horizon Zero Dawn, the, the voices sound terrible when they when they announced it. And I, I was like, oh, God, I hope it sounds better than this in the real game. The stream I was watching, I was watching on Twitch and there was a massive crackle throughout the whole thing oh, in the tent. It was bad. And I was just like, that's incredibly annoying. <laughs> Overall, I think E3 was a bit shaky this year in terms of... Um, like on the technical side of things, like there's a lot of video issues um, that I noticed when it would cut between like feeds and stuff. Um, yeah, there's a so lot of very of abrupt cuts, not just in Sony, yeah. in quite a few of the conferences, they just had to literally go boom, smash cut. And I was like, okay. Yeah, 
and jarring as you were fuck. noticing that I, I, I heard you mentioning that a couple of times i was watching some of your feeds and uh it's just like you, a whoa of times that's you abrupt that. <laughs> yeah yeah all right guys to to wrap it up i'll give you kind of my overall thoughts um yep fine the games look cool it's a shame we're not getting more of them this year um, but i have a feeling we're going to find out more of what's coming on the immediate horizon i think it's in like two to three months when we get tgs yeah mm. we might see more then i think a lot of people have been putting off things from e3 to go somewhere else absolutely they have it's it does annoy me ever so slightly <laughs> Yeah, E3 is just so crowded. It's done to kind of people are going. Oh, hang on, let's put our I know, but this is flags to in the ground the elsewhere. That everyone. I know talks it's too about. crowded, man. It's too crowded. Uh, you got fucking guys like Digital Devolver that just want to make fucking noise, like so. Yeah, it's fun <laughs> noise. It makes sense to not be there. Fun noise, but noise all the same. Um, but I mean, my only kind of negative, I think, for Sony is I just wanted to know more about the platform and what's happening going forward into the future. So a little bit like PSVR. You know, have they got anything new? Um, you know, have they got a freaking Game Pass coming for Sony or something? You know, I'm sure they're cooking up something. Surely, I just wouldn't to know about it. Yeah. You know, overall, it was it was good. It was a good showing. The games are great, and you can't complain about that. And, you know, that's why we watch these events, after all. The games were amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, as always, guys, please remember to leave your thoughts and comments down below. We're on the tail end of our E3 kind of coverage, but we have got all the VODs up from each conference where you can hear our live commentary of each conference up on the YouTube channel at the moment. And we've also got one more Pocket Edition 2 actually um, coming up in terms of E3 coverage. We've got our Nintendo one coming up, which will be on the very near horizon dropping soon. And I'm hoping to catch up with Max who actually attended E3 and get uh, some of his just thoughts and opinions of the overall experience of E3 yes, in general. Yes, next time he's on the newscast, I am grilling him. <laughs> yes, so we're going to grill the shit out of him. As always, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the Nintendo episode of Pocket Edition. Have a good one.